some wandering minds can be rather long. We can fall into certain trances and be wandering for days or longer. We can forget our intention and experience of inwardness. Other wanderings last a tenth of a second or a timeless shortness is just as they begin to emerge. Ah, there's that. No need to follow that. And in either or all cases, the concentration, the focus on the sensations of breathing in the body provides a point of stability. And that mysterious other factor, awareness, mindfulness, sati, illuminates, lights up, makes conscious the process. Please acknowledge and open to the reality of a body that sits here. Notice its posture, its shape. Recognize the fact that in addition to attending to the body or to the breath, it sometimes will be possible to be awake in the whole body. This cloud of life that breathes. Mindfulness of the entire breath body. Resting back into the present moment. Dissolving into the the fact that we are the universe. We are that which contains the universe. And we also exist at the level of birth and death. And it's here that We wish in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Please think of your loved ones, how easy, how easy it is to love them. And then there's the challenges to that, of course. Let none deceive another an aspiration of honesty, or despise any being in any state, having no enemies. And when the mind creates its enemy images, recognizing them for what they are, the product of fear and natural selection, and the desperate need to stay alive. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart, let's cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world. spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths. 
outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down. One can sustain this recollection. So radiating, use your imagination. Become a golden being, radiating light in all directions, radiating healing. Now for some people, visualizations work really well, others it doesn't work. So then just the thought, how shall I be today? I'd like to be really loving to myself and to everyone I encounter, including the Zoom meeting encounters. <laughs> and so please now notice the body might like to stretch. A sitting body stretches. How does it do it? How do you make that happen? Stay present in the sensations. Oh boy, stiff this morning. Mm. Ooh. And then at some point, Notice the intention to allow your eyes to open and let them open. <sighs> Yesterday, I offered a Dharma talk at <laughs> on the five hindrances. I hope you noticed them some yesterday. <clears throat> Today I want to speak for just a moment about posture. There are four postures in the traditional training. They are sitting, standing, walking, and lying down and everything in between. They then expand to include driving, sprinting, crouching, doing all the things we do. A long time ago, decades, I had the opportunity to enter Burma for one week. And I, I did a week of practice, shaved my head and novice ordination and did a week of practice with an ancient old master called Tangpulu Saida. He was a person who at age 12 or something went into a cave and was in there for 28 years. The local people took care of him, honored him, and then he came out and the rest of his life has been, well, he's now deceased, was just continuous service, presence for people. And while I was there, he, 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 this was my practice. Uh, on the first day, he said, become aware of seeing. And all day my practice was seeing, seeing, seeing. Not mindfulness of breathing, just seeing. Oh, seeing is happening, seeing. And you know, what do you do after 10 minutes of that? It's like, oh, yeah. oh seeing seeing. Second day, hearing. Notice that you're hearing. Be aware of hearing. Being that which is aware of hearing. Hearing. Third day, be aware of posture, sitting. All right, sitting. Sitting, sitting uh, from five in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Sitting, then walking, walking, standing, standing, lying down. 
posture. Seeing, hearing, sitting, touching. Suddenly there's life in the hands. There's the contact of the body with the chair. There's the headset on the ear. Day five, seeing, do this with me, seeing, hearing, sitting, touching. You could touch, be aware of one foot touching, another foot touching, clothing touching the body, the hands touching, the clothing touching the upper body, lips touching each other, seeing, hearing, sitting, touching. Oh, and there's also the tongue touching in the mouth. It's a good one. Hmm. Great way to drive. So, adding into your practice one of those, the fact of posture. If you're standing and you're waiting in a checkout line, what shall I do? Well, you could be just aware. Well, here I am standing. Standing. This is standing. So, that's the added piece of the puzzle today. The, the phenomenon of the posture of the body and how it's possible to be really aware of it. <clears throat> A couple of announcements come to mind. One is... Um, there are classes coming up online at PIMC. I'm doing one on the Dhammapada, the beautiful pithy teachings of, uh, from the Buddha. Uh, Doug Pullen is doing one of the cultivation of heart. And uh, Gary Sanders is doing a one on the uh, four foundations of mindfulness. So I'm very much looking forward to mine. It starts next Wednesday night, I think. And there are lots of other things happening. Jim Dalton does a, a Monday night gathering, and there's something each night of the week. And Richard Lang is zooming in, I love that, is zooming in from uh, England to, to lead us in two hours of Headless Way practice uh, on Saturday. And you can find that on the website. I encourage you to, to do that. He's, he's quite a fellow, and he teaches uh, all over the world. And he was coming, but the COVID issue stopped him. Um, oh, yeah, and and also uh, the the gentle reminder that PIMC uh, has ongoing expenses, and that one of the ways you can really feel connected with the place, with any place actually, is to contribute in some way. We can't do volunteerism there now. Uh, but uh, I invite you to go and look at the website and find the contribution spot. Uh, <laughs> our, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it? The treasurer, treasurer system would love it if you find this class and make a contribution so we can tell where things are coming from. But any of those donation things work just great. <laughs> so, that said, I'm really happy to, uh, to be here with you this morning. I find myself in a really quiet spot internally. So I want to open up. Where's the time? Oh, yes, must. I want to open up and see what's happening with you and to invite you to be to, um, to the practice of counsel where we speak from the heart, we speak what's true, we speak for ourself, and uh, we say what's necessary. So if you wish to speak or share something, please unmute yourself and speak up. Robert, it's Linnell. Hello, Linnell. 
the Loving Kindness Sutra. I love chanting that. It's nice, isn't it? Really. I mean, it was really lovely. I loved chanting it in the whole room with us all together. Um, I guess two pieces that really sit with me frequently when I say that, but especially today, is uh, the may all beings be at ease. I know when we were at uh, Dhamma Dana, we would always say it at least twice. <laughs> and um, just to really let that sit. And the other piece for me is um, for those that are seen and unseen, I think it's my uh, sister-in-law was a trustee and guardian for various people frequently that aged and people who aren't being taken care of. But she had this little postcard in her room about the homeless people. people they're the unseen. People don't want to be near them. They don't want to touch them. They don't want to talk about them. And I thought it was very poignant because she was always, I guess, a, a guardian for them. So and I appreciate seeing those words and chanting those words. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Linnell. That, that reminds me, uh, I, I was traveling through a part of Portland yesterday I don't usually go to. And... Um, uh, there was a, a homeless camp and I was quite drawn to go visit them and I didn't of course at this time but I uh, there was a time a few years ago when uh, we had this huge turkey dinner for Christmas and and I, I made a soup I made a giant soup and then I made it bigger out of a it was a canning uh, I put in two more chickens and vegetables, and then Jeannie Mooneyham, one of our lovely friends at PIMC, and I went down under one of the bridges on a horrible night with uh, bread, heated rolls, and that soup, and we had, it was so moving. Mm. Um, and a fellow, a very, a very well-spoken fellow came and said, may I help you? And and uh, the thing that really got me that night was the f there was a fellow who was obviously strung out on something horrible and maybe meant severely mentally ill. He, he was kind of hanging over a bicycle and I couldn't rouse him. He was still alive, but um, there, there's a lot. There's a lot going on out there in our cities that's just rough. So thank you, Linnell. So I didn't mean to get off on that whole thing. Anybody else, please? <sighs> hmm. Oops. Hi, Christopher. Uh, I've been struggling with uh, the man in the White House, and uh, oh. every morning seems like something new to be upset about. Yesterday, yesterday, him cutting funding to who, and I, I just struggle so much to practice compassion towards him. I just wanted to share that because it's it's a struggle. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, there's so much destruction coming from his sickness. It's, and, and the people who support him, it's quite remarkable to me. I mean, that 40% of Americans think that what he's doing is just fantastic. And I watch for 30 seconds and see a person who is unfit. It's so, it's very difficult. Yeah, so what's to do with that? You know, 
I, I have sadness, I have irritation, um, powerlessness, and then I, I just don't dwell in it that much. If there was something we could do actively, then of course we'd be called to do that, but just hopefully voting. I do, uh, while I search for something, anybody else like to share? Thank you, Christopher. Robert. I'm just, here. I just wanted, because it triggered in me last night a wonderful exchange during the uh, NDC practice, and I've been struggling mightily with a friend who's also in the healthcare field and she lives alone and she's just been spinning it just is it's been very very hard because this situation has brought up so many traumas and fears for her and i spent an afternoon with her and i just felt completely helpless like how do i try and employ my NDC skills how do i try and do this anyways last night's practice i was reminded by a lovely uh partner when we broke out that the equanimity practice the uh she sent me some very much like a meta practice just sharing that sense of i love you and i honor you and i cannot fix your life for you i cannot heal you but i can send you all the love and compassion and just now as christopher was saying that i think that's going to be a new revived and more consistent practice for me because i think that's where i have to go when i see so many people hurt or lashing out or beating themselves up or operating ways that just seem so irrational in one sense and and counterproductive as Michael's saying so anyways it just struck me and uh, and thank you thank you equanimity you bet anybody else I hear somebody. Can you get any louder from your end, do you think? Uh, I'm not sure how. Okay. Uh, um, I, I kind of got into the last part of the poem. I was brushing my teeth, but it brought, um, it brought back the fires in Australia and um, mm -hmm. the million animals that died. And I thought to myself at that time, I thought, you know, nothing's going to be done unless it affects human lives. <laughs> and now we see some changes in China and such. And um, I feel that that's kind of sad. It reflects on, you know, on human and it reflects on the human race. And I don't think that was always the case past different cultures. But, um, but you know, at least something's you know, at least it's bring, being brought more to life now, or, or, you know, it's out in the forefront a little, how we treat the animals, how we treat um, the plant kingdom and so forth, um, how we're all connected. And um, then I also wanted to share, I, I live in Kirkland, Washington, and we're the um, kind of epicenter of, you know, I think it started the COVID started much sooner, but that's when it was really brought to light. And um, I live right down the street from Life Care Center. Whoa. And yeah, yeah. So a couple days ago, I rode my bike by and I just wanted to share. It was really touching. There's um, trees that line the parking lot and somebody had um, tied blue ribbons around and put blue flowers. And then there were a lot of messages thanking the first responders and it was just really touching i mean i know they're looking at a lot of fines and things and a lot of probably lawsuits and everything but it was still there was something about it that was just very touching it really touched me you know that even through all that you know they you know there were those messages to the the firefighters and the people that went in there that risked their lives mm. so that was very touching so thank you lisa oh you're welcome
Hello. Um, Hi, Kathleen. Good morning. Um, my son is in the hospital. Um, he has been since last Thursday. Um, he was home for six hours and back in. Mm. So he continues to be in um, the hospital where the first COVID people passed. And um, he does not have COVID. What he has is quite mysterious. But, um, you know, we're all vigiling. And um, I noticed when I left yesterday, there were about 10 trees and they all had blue ribbons. It was very, very touching to me too. So please keep him in your prayers. Mm -hmm. Robert? I hear someone. Yeah, this is Andra. I haven't been on for a few days, and boy, have I missed being here. Um, but I, I did want to just see, it. was it your daughter that's go heading to uh, New York? Yeah. Has she gotten the supply, the extra supplies that she, she needs? She's gotten some. Some she, she has 10 masks and 95s, which is... and. The, the recruiter uh, says that the hospital she's going to is quite well supplied and that uh, there's been plane loads coming from China that have been helping in New York. It's still rather dire at some of the downtown hospitals. She's a little north. She will be. Thank you for asking. If you, if you had any sitting around and wanted to get it to me, that'd be great. And she'll take it and it'll be, she'll, uh, knowing her, she'll share it all right away. Okay. I'm on the look. Okay. Thank you. Someone found these uh, 11 N95s in the uh, carpentry, in the, in the, in the, sh the workshop. <laughs> I had two or three there myself. Thanks for asking. I have such an interesting experience with this morning practice that uh, 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 I come to our gathering and then my my the mind goes so deep so quickly and uh, and then there's this op great openness and then when we do this part I feel so human and so. Uh, so vulnerable and so can so it's so the the polarity is so amazing 
drawn into my heart really a lot by our presence together. Sangha! Uh. Robert, this is Christy, and I had an unexpected moment yesterday, um, and I think mindfulness helped me get through it. My husband and I were working up in the attic trying to fix the pull-down door, and it has a big spring, and I was having to pull the tension of the spring while he tried to push something to hook on to it and he wanted to do it just his way and I was seeing another way and I just let it let it go just try to do it his way and it was a different behavior and then thinking it's because I'm I'm meditating I'm trying to be mindful and then one one question when when you acknowledge something like you know um, worry uh -huh. you don't want to focus in on it um, are you saying like I I feel that worry it's there you're you're something and then you sh you sh just shove it away <laughs> If you can, why not? No, not quite, but very close. When you're worrying, when worrying is happening, worrying is, is doing its thing, and then awareness of worrying occurs. Are you the awareness or the worry? Where do you identify more? And what, what we develop over time, and sometimes pretty quickly we make big leaps, is the capacity to objectify, to turn the worry into an object. And then we have, then we have some, some, um, some leverage or some purchase, and we can realize, this is, mer this is worry, I'm going to return to the breath. And we substitute, not so much shoving it away, but we we substitute the object we'd rather be paying attention to. Is that making sense? And that's why we do it gazillions of times with mind wandering, thank you very much, come back to the breath, the mind wandering, come back. And we do that and do that and do that and do that. And we, more and more and more we wake up and therefore more aspects, more phenomena of our experience become objects of observation rather than who I am. A great example, um, over the years I've worked with many, many people on the issue of self-hatred. And at the beginning, we always think, I, I, it's, we take that voice as my voice. It's like, I, and, and why do I do this to myself? And the, the, the homework that I give people is, for a couple of weeks, have a little pad, write down whatever the self-hating story is. And it's, it's different variations, and pick out the themes. And then um, work with yourself, or, or I would work with a person, and we would, uh, he or she would share those self-hating things, statements, which is a big step already, sharing it. Uh, but then uh, we might, she, she, he might say them into the room, and then I might say them back, and we'd, we'd work with them until they become, it becomes obvious that this isn't my voice. I worked with a woman one time who had a great aha. She said, oh, Grandma, this is Grandma. I've got Grandma on here. And then we moved from there. So, so letting these thoughts and emotions and anxieties and, and uh, helping them become something that we know rather than we are. Is that making sense? Yeah, I like it a lot. Thanks. <laughs> Great. And the fact that you saw it happening already is 98% of the task. From there on, it's all just implementation again and again and again. The insight and in getting that view is the, the breakthrough.
Well, it's just a little after eight. Any, anybody sitting there with something that you'd like to share, but you're holding yourself back? Please. Robert, I have a question. I hear someone. Lorraine. Oh, hi, Lorraine. Nice, nice wall hanging behind you. Thank you. I made it a long time ago. <laughs> um, I have a friend in California who I was talking to yesterday. And um, she seems to think that um, all this isn't as bad as it seems. That, um, you know, she saw an article that the news put on of... Um, there was a someone in the article, but the but the picture of the article was actually from a different disaster. But the the news was putting it as attached to coronavirus, and um, she just thinks that um, you know that everything going on that the news and the government is just making it seem worse than it is. And um, when I got off the phone, I looked around around Google to find you know, um, pictures of the front line, what's, you know, what's actually going on. And there isn't really much that I could find. And I know a lot of people in this group are in the front line and they're dealing with what's actually going on. And so I was wondering if they, if there's anything, um, that they might have to say to that. Thank you. I have conversation with someone who is um, from my perspective I would say has fallen into the trance of the um, conspiracy theory world and uh, There are whole parts of our, of our nation that uh, see all the mainstream media as bogus. And it's not by accident that's happened. That's, um, anyone who seeks dictatorial power must discredit the press. And in this era of social media, Anyone, look at me broadcasting all over the planet with this. Any, anyone who has a microphone and a computer and internet can create stories. And so there are these tremendous stories of distrust of, uh, of everything. Uh, one per thing I heard from this person just the other day was that 90, uh, 95,000 healthcare providers have gone to New York City and less than 1% of them have been used. Now that's silly, but people really believe this. And so one of the reasons why it's important for us to practice, I think, is to find the balance behind all, the, all that uh, and to, to not be, to not be too vul so vulnerable to the stories. And to rem I mean, all, all, the only place we can have real influence is, is in our sphere of influence. And how loving and kind can I be with the people that I know? And, and there's all this tumult that happens. Um, but I can't engage very much with it, otherwise I start getting really disturbed. And so I hope that's a little help. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll let you know what my daughter finds. Okay. I think what she'll find, as she found here um, at Providence, is loving, caring, hardworking people. Um, nurses, doctors, garbage cleaner uppers. Uh, I was amazed how many people it took to keep my room functioning when I was in the hospital. And uh, they're all doing that right now. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. Um, I, I don't know if, if you're asking uh, for like a reality check about that. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm a nurse and I currently teach and I teach practicing nurses that have come back to get their bachelor's degree that are all out working. Um, my colleagues um, that are practicing here in New Mexico, California, it's real and you know they, they all send stories to me all of the time about what's happening. So um, I, I'm not really sure if that's what you're after but these are people that are in my life um, around the country that and here that are um, in the midst of it in a variety of practice settings, mental health settings, hospice, palliative care, um, oncology. Um, and yeah, so one of the most difficult times for my colleagues. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what wonderful work you do. So, anybody else before we go? It's about, oh, it's 10 after 8, time to end. Anybody here further? Hmm. All right. Well, let me just remind you to support your Dharma Center. And we can all continue to be supported. So I'm going to unmute and we'll have our little cacophonous parting song. <laughs> May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Oh, I love this. It's so. <laughs> it's, 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 Bye, Allison. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, dear friends on YouTube, Ustream, and Facebook. <laughs>